Nation. Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. My guest is United States Senator Tom Cotton. Good morning, Senator. Welcome back. Good morning, Hugh. Thanks for having me back on. I'm playing the Vietnam protest music of my youth. I wasn't in college at the time that went on, but I heard it and I saw it, and I am I'm amazed that we're seeing it again. What is your reaction to the takeover of Columbia's Hamilton Hall this morning and to the uh, obvious anti-Semitic actions and assaults that occurred at UCLA that went unpunished yesterday? Uh, Hugh, from coast to coast, we're seeing nascent pogroms on college campuses. Uh, you know, Columbia, Columbia seemed to have been the lead of the most recent round. Um, you've seen the videos I have of students uh, draped in Palestinian kefia headdress physically uh, preventing Jewish students from attending classes, uh, much like Nazi brown shirts did in the 1930s in Germany. Um, and now overnight, uh, these radicals have apparently taken uh, over an administration building on Columbia's campus and barricaded themselves in. We shouldn't be surprised that they're escalating their tactics when the supposed adults on these campuses won't do their basic responsibility of providing safety and security to all students and bringing in police, and if necessary, police from outside the university police department, and beyond that, the National Guard, to restore law and order. These are not criminal masterminds. They're not paramilitary militants. They are uh, deeply troubled uh, and fanatical students who can be easily detained and removed from these so-called encampments or from seizing the building. That should have been done long ago. I just remind all your listeners that uh, one of the predecessors of the current Columbia University president was Dwight Eisenhower. Between his time as Supreme Allied Commander and President of the United States, he was President of Columbia for about five years. Just ask yourself what Ike would have done uh, at such a despicable display of anti-Semitic criminal activity on his campus. People should remember that Ike visited a liberated death camp and was so disgusted he brought the local German citizenry in to v- to view what they knew was going on, but they had never articulated what was going on. I know what's going on in these campuses. They're anti-Semitic, hate-filled circles of students who should never have been admitted. So the question is, what do we do? I know you have suggested taxing endowments, but that's going to hit the innocent as well as the guilty, right, Senator? What about just cutting off all federal funding Tanning University with more than $5 billion in an endowment. I mean well, all federal funding. Yeah, that's one option, too, Hugh. But there are other things we can do specific to this outbreak of pro-terrorist fanaticism. Um, for instance, the Department of Justice and the Department of Education should be investigating the sources of funding for these groups. These are not just spontaneous student uprisings, Hugh. I mean, just look at the pictures. They're out there in tents that cost hundreds of dollars apiece. Uh, There's credible reporting that left-wing groups like the Soros Foundation or the Rockefeller Foundation have been behind funding these groups. Um, Second, uh, many of these students are are quite possibly foreign students here on student visas. Uh, The Department of Justice and Education should demand universities turn over the names of all foreign students who have been engaged in this kind of criminal activity, or for that matter, who who have even engaged in anti-Semitic pro-Hamas rhetoric. They have no right to be in this country. Their visa should be revoked immediately, and they should be told to go home. If they don't go home, they should be deported immediately. Frankly, these private universities should kick out students, even if they're American citizens, who've engaged in that kind of pro-terrorist rhetoric. You don't have a First Amendment right against a private university to come on and advocate for Hamas or Hezbollah or other foreign terrorist organizations. And you can just imagine what they would do. In fact, you don't have to imagine what they do. Students that have had their offers of admission rescinded or been expelled from school for opposing favored left-wing advocacy groups like Black Lives Matter at some of these universities. So there's many steps that can be taken specific to these criminal fanatics, You, I suspect Joe Biden's Department of Justice and Department of Education won't. But just wait till next year when Donald Trump is back in office. I, I can tell you, I can tell these uh, fanatics on campus who are breaking the law and all the administrators on these campuses who won't enforce the law, that when that happens, winter is coming for them. Winter is coming. Senator, yesterday, my favorite podcast is the Commentary Podcast. And yesterday, John Podhoritz, Abe Greenwald, Christine Rosen were joined by Adam White, who's a legal scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, George Mason, and they went through all of this, this uh, insanity that is going on on the campuses, as well as in the courtrooms. 
And I don't know that Joe Biden can politically recover from the combination of all the things that are hitting him. Certainly he can't with Corrine Jean-Pierre being his spokesperson. But do you think he can recover from this? Well, he needs to do what he hasn't done yet, which is come out and forcefully condemn all of these anti-Semitic fanatics who are violating the law on these campuses across the country. He needs to uh, urge local Democratic mayors or Democratic governors in these states to help the university presidents restore order. And he needs to do so without equivocating between these anti-Semites and Israel, which is fighting uh, a war, an existential war of self-defense against Hamas. That's exactly what he did last week. This is from a guy who supposedly ran for president in the first place because he falsely accused Donald Trump of saying there are good people on both sides of uh, crimes and mob activity in Charlottesville seven years ago, when, of course, Donald Trump was talking about a debate about how to handle a historic statute. That's exactly what Joe Biden did, was equivocate between anti-Semitic fanatics and Israel. Um, uh, he needs to come out and forcefully condemn all of these anti-Semitic Semitic fanatics. But the reason he doesn't is a lot of them form a core part of his coalition. The Democrats have let this anti-Semitism fester in their party for years, the point where they now have people like Elon Omar and Rashida Tlaib uh, in the Congress. In fact, Elon Omar's daughter, or maybe her niece, was the one was one of these students who was uh, instigating these things at Columbia. Uh, it is astonishing to me, but I want to go back to first principles. Hamas is, I believe, listed by the United States as a terrorist organization. They are holding Americans hostage. Why are we interfering with Israel's ability to get them back by stopping Israel at the outskirts of Rafah? We should not. We should. The only thing that gets these hostages well, back is the defeat of Hamas. Because, because the war in Israel, given the anti-Semitism that Democrats have let fester for years, puts intense pressure on Joe Biden's electoral coalition. And Joe Biden has elevated his own electoral interests over the vital national interest of this country for the last seven months. And he's going to continue to do so for the next six months, because I think he views it in his deluded frame of mind, like many Democrats, the most important foreign policy interest of the United States is to defeat Donald Trump. And that's why they are conducting foreign policy by electoral college strategy. I should say, actually, that would be the favorable hopeful interpretation. The, the less favorable interpretation would be they're using that electoral uh, imperative to do what they've always wanted to do, as Barack Obama said, get daylight between the United States and Israel uh, and find a way to sever the longstanding, deeply held sympathies and alliance between America and Israel. You know, Senator, the future of Gaza depends upon the eradication of Hamas and then the cooperation of the Gulf states, which stand ready to cooperate with Israel in the rebuilding of Gaza into a terrorist-free, it could be, it could be a beautiful city on the Mediterranean. It could be a lot of different things. But as long as Joe Biden is in charge, and I think Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan, I don't think they have a compass. I, I, I really don't think they have any strategy. Do you? Uh, beyond what's good for Joe Biden's reelection and, and trying to beat Donald Trump, no, they have no compass there at all. Of you, I mean, the, Gaza will only prosper when the people who live there accept Israel as a neighbor. Um, the problem with the so-called two-state solution, Hugh, is that most Arabs living in Gaza and Judea and Samaria don't want two states. They want one state. They want an Arab state in the Holy Land. They want to drive Jews out of the Holy Land. That's why one of their anti-Semitic chants that you hear at these pro-Hamas encampments is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. The route for your, just for your listeners, Hugh, the river is the Jordan River, the sea is the Mediterranean Sea, and everything in between it is the modern state of Israel. That's what Arabs living in Gaza, Judea, and Samaria largely want, and, and until they accept that the Israeli people are going to be living on that land, they are not going to have peace. Now, I want to close, Senator. You're a soldier. You served in Iraq. We have a State Department that brought forward yesterday charges of abuse by five different IDF units. None of them connected to Gaza, by the way. They all go back before 2022. They've all been remedied. I listened to a long explanation of this by Haviv Redigur, who served as a combat medic in one of these particularly Haredi-focused uh, units. What are they doing at the Department of State? You have some jurisdiction over them. That spokesperson should be fired. That whole group of people should be fired. I hope that Donald Trump fires them all 
when he comes in because they are undermining the state of Israel with this nonsense. Yeah, of course they are, Hugh. Again, it gets back to foreign policy by electoral college strategy. They're trying to find any way they can to point out to their left-wing fanatics who are taking over college campuses uh, and chanting anti-Semitic phrases that, see, we're tough. We're tough on Israel, too. Yeah, we're supporting them in Gaza, but we can take tough measures on them as well. So they're threatening sanctions against specific elements of the Israeli Defense Forces, an outrageous position for a democratic ally that holds its own troops accountable whenever they violate military rules, regulations, or the laws of land warfare, just as we do in our military. Uh, you know, I keep thinking of Abu Ghraib. Uh, every military has a tail end on the bell curve of bad actors, and militaries don't want them, and they punish them. I'm sure you did as an officer in the in the groups that you controlled. You made sure they did. I've never seen the State Department do this before. Am I missing that they do this routinely for our allies? Because I have never seen this before. No, no, Hugh, not to my knowledge. And I would suspect it's another example of how Israel is held to a singular and unique standard in the world. You know, when are, uh, the State Department has done this specific military units in other allies around uh, the world. I'm not aware of any precedent for it. Uh, okay, last question. The ICC wants to issue arrest warrants for Israeli officials. Again, anti-Semites are in charge of international organizations. No surprise there. What We're not part of the ICC. What can we do about that? We're not part of the ICC. Israel is not part of the ICC. The ICC doesn't have jurisdiction over us. It doesn't have jurisdiction when a nation's own courts and legal system holds uh, its uh, leaders accountable. So, you know, I've been involved in trying to persuade the ICC not to move forward with this ludicrous action, let me just promise the ICC and specifically Kareem Khan, their lead prosecutor, if they do take these steps, the Trump administration will ensure that Kareem Khan faces charges in the United States and he will not be able to travel anywhere without facing extradition to the United States. So if he wants to move forward with that and imperil his own freedom, I welcome him to do so. Otherwise, he should get back in his lane and focus on the real war crime like what Hamas has done in Gaza. Senator Tom Cotton, that's why I want you to be the attorney general. If you're not the vice president in the next Trump administration, thank you, Senator. I won't make you respond.